Shortcuts are the one thing that can make anything go by faster, especially video editing. So that's exactly what we're gonna get into is the keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. The keyboard shortcuts we're gonna be going over are going to be essential to editing faster in DaVinci Resolve. They're not necessarily every single shortcut because that would be probably an hour or two long video. So I'm just going over the ones that make my workflow go by really fast. So I know that you're gonna get some great value out of this. Pretty much anytime I'll be using control or Alt on this Windows computer. It's the same as you using Command or Option on a Mac. These first shortcuts I'm gonna go over, you probably use in other programs. So that's why I'm bringing them first. We have Undo, Redo. Super simple, if you do something like say, I accidentally deleted this, I can hit Control Z, brings it back and undoes that. And Control Shift Z, redoes that action. This one is a big one, and if you have come from something like Premiere Pro, you already know this one. It is Control S to save. So I'm gonna go ahead and move some stuff around so you can see what I'm talking about. And then there was that quick little saving icon. By default, DaVinci does already have an auto save on, but just in case, that is something I always like to do in the event of a crash. Copy and pasting works the same, just like in any other program. Select what you wanna copy, Control, C to copy, go over wherever you want to paste it, control V to paste. And there you go. Now that we've got some of the basics out of the way, let's get into the fun part when you're going to be using your tools. The basic tools that I always use is going to be my cut tool, which is B for blade. And you'll see this red icon highlights for the blade. And now I can go and make cuts. However, I can't go back and move anything because it's just on the cut tool. So I hit A and it goes right back to my mouse, the pointer, so I can move everything around. Another one that comes in handy is the snapping tool. This is what allows things to line up, how you see that little white line come whenever I go between the edges of the beginning of certain clips. I can actually turn that off. The reason why you'd wanna turn that off is if you're trying to move it by just a little bit, just a few frames, and it just keeps snapping to the clip above or below it. This really comes in handy. So you just click in and that will turn it off. And now you don't have the snapping. Of course, you can just turn it back on by hitting in again. And it highlights up here. You know that it's selected again. Now we have playback. Of course, the basic playback function is just hitting spacebar and it plays, hit spacebar again, and it pauses. Here's some other great keyboard shortcuts for your playback. First you have L. L works just like the space bar. It plays forward. However, you can actually click it multiple times and you'll see that it'll speed up the footage. So I'll click L again right there. 2x, 4x, 8x, 16x, 32x. Now I can actually do the reverse and play backwards by using J. And it goes out regular time speed and just like an L, you click it more times and it goes faster and faster and faster all the way up to 64 times and that is as fast as it'll go and honestly is really really fast and for keyboard layout you can actually hit K and that will pause it instead of going to reach down and hit the spacebar every time you can just go from JKL and play back and forth which really comes in handy whenever you're editing something really long like an interview. Sometimes whenever you're playing things back, you want to just see it a few times in a row. You want to loop everything. So you can do that by holding control and forward slash, and that will turn on the loop icon. Now, if I play the video, once it hits the end, it comes back and starts playing over by making your in and out points on the timeline. To make those, it's as simple as clicking I for in and O for out. We have the playback down. Now let's get into selecting all of your clips. Obviously just clicking a clip will do the job by selecting it and you can hold it down, move it around, everything, that's great. If you wanna select multiple clips from a certain side, you can obviously just click and drag with this box and select it that way. But if you have a really long timeline and a lot of videos, that can be a hassle. To select everything from the left side of your playhead, which is the red line indicator here, you can select the clip that you want to start with and then hit Control Y. That's going to select all of the clips on that particular track. Now, if you want to select everything behind it, you'll press Control, Alt, and Y. Then that selects the top one so you get all the clips on the left side of the playhead. Now to do the opposite on the right side of your, of your playhead, 
select the clip and hit Y. That's gonna select everything on the first track. And then Alt Y will select everything else on the right side of the playhead. And if you wanna select just everything in general, Control A will do that and you have everything on your timeline selected. If you wanna select just a couple of clips here and there, you can select one, hold down Control, select all the other ones that you want. If you wanna select within a certain range, not the entire length from the left to the right, like I just showed you, you can do that by clicking your first one, hold down shift and click your last one. It's gonna select everything up until that point. Something you may run into is clips not being connected. Maybe it's an audio clip. Maybe you have a couple of clips from multiple camera angles that you want to be connected to each other so that whenever you're making edits, they move together. There's an easy way to do that. Let's say we wanted these two clips to be connected. We'll select them both and hold down Control Alt L. And as you saw, there was a, a little link icon that popped up. And alternatively, to de-link them, just do that again, Control Alt L. And now nothing is connected. So previously we saw that the audio and the video were linked together. Now they're unlinked. So do keep that in mind if you are unlinking some clips. Gaps, these things can be annoying. So we could just bring this clip and drag it here. That got rid of that gap but this clip is left behind. So to move everything forward while getting rid of that gap, it's super simple. Select the gap, it's gonna highlight gray. If you hit backspace or delete, it'll get rid of that gap and bring everything forward. Now, if you're doing the same with a clip, if I hit backspace, it's not gonna work. But if I hit delete, it will bring the clips forward while deleting that clip simultaneously. While we're on the topic of moving clips around, one great thing that I like to do when I'm making selects is moving clips up on another track. So to do that, let's say this one and this one. I can move them up by holding down Alt and arrow up key. I can bring them back down by doing the same, but with the down key, so Alt and down. Remember earlier how I talked about moving clips just a couple frames at a time? You can do that by moving them one frame at a time using the comma and period key. So I'll select this clip and I'll hit the period button and it is going to move it over to the right just one frame at a time. Now I can hit the comma key and bring it back to the left one frame at a time. And that can become really handy when you're trying to just get really, really perfect in your cuts. Another move tool that will move clips from left to right that's actually a little cool. I personally haven't found a great use for this one yet. And that is using the control L key and the control J key. So I'll select this clip, hit control L, and I'll actually just move it forward by itself. I, my hands are not touching the keyboard whatsoever. I'm gonna hit pause and stop that. And now I'm gonna hit control J and then it's going to move all by itself back to the left and it'll actually go and play through at full speed. So it's going pretty much as if you were playing it back, but you can see that it's overriding everything on the timeline. So I haven't really found a use for this yet, but I thought it was a really cool keyboard shortcut to share with you guys. Now we're gonna get into moving on the timeline. What I'm about to show you isn't really a keyboard shortcut, it's more of a mouse shortcut. If you're someone that's on a Mac using a Magic Mouse, it's gonna be a little bit different for you, but I'll show you what you can do instead. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, specifically one that you can click, if you click the scroll wheel and hold it, you can drag back and forth on the timeline. And it makes it really easy just to go to a certain spot without having to hold down this little bar and then drag it back and forth. It just, it feels a little bit better, like you're, it's easier to move around. Now, if you are on a magic mouse, you can do the same by using your two fingers and scrolling left and right, or just swiping left and right. And if you don't want to do that, you can accomplish the same going left to right just by holding out control and scrolling left and right, and it'll do the same thing. Another great thing is zooming in on your timeline. If you hold down alt and scroll, then you can zoom in and out exactly where you need to. I will say if you're doing this, it may only zoom in where the playhead is and not where your mouse or your cursor is. And that can be a little bit annoying because you want to actually zoom in on what you're looking at. So to change that, if you go up to view and right here, there's zoom around mouse pointer. 
check that and then now it'll only zoom in and out where you have your mouse and it just makes it a lot easier. If you want to scale up your clips that you're viewing on the timeline, you can always just drag them like this or you can click over here and do video height or audio height. But you can actually change the height by holding down shift and using the scroll wheel and that will increase or decrease the size so it's easier for you to see all of your clips. You can also zoom in on your preview window. So just normally scrolling in and out will zoom in and out. But if you want to move around holding down control and using the scroll will go up and down and control and shift will go left and right while scrolling. But if you want to get back to full screen, you can do that easily by hitting Z and that will zoom it back to the perfect fit. Earlier I showed you how to use the cut tool. I like using that, but while I'm editing, I usually am playing through the footage and making cuts along the way. So you can actually do that by having a cut made right where the playhead is. So where this red line is, we're gonna make a cut by holding down control and D and that's gonna make a cut right there. So for an example, how I usually edit, I'll hit the L key, fast forward, ooh, found a good spot, gonna hit pause, control B, boom, make a cut, keep going. And that's really a big one that helps me edit a lot faster. Here's an example where you might have a couple clips on top of each other and you don't want them to be present while maybe playing back or in the final export. You can actually turn those off without deleting them. So you can enable or disable clips. To do this, you just select the clip that you wanna disable and then hit B. Now, you'll see that it's gone, it's not gonna play right here, and it'll just show the top footage. You can also do this with audio, but if you click a clip that has audio, it's also going to turn off the video itself. You can select just the individual audio or video part of a linked clip by holding down Alt. So I'll hold down Alt and I'll click, and I'll hit D and that turns off just that video. And I'll hold down Alt and click the audio so I only select the audio and I'll turn that off so now that audio is going to be muted. If you're doing anything with speeding up footage or slowing it down to make some slow motion, there are some keyboard shortcuts to get into that. The first one you can do is select a clip, hit Control R, and that's gonna show your speed change. You'll see the typical arrow to just stretch out or pull back your footage, but there'll be this other arrow now that you can click and drag and that's going to slow down or speed up. And you can see the percentage represented underneath. You can also click the drop down and go to chain speed and select it that way. That comes in handy whenever you're just trying to make some speed adjustments that are gonna fit within the cut. You can also just select and hit R to bring up the speed and you can go by actual percentage or duration or if you have audio and you don't want it to sound real weird like a chipmunk or like a monster, you have a pitch correction that's built into it that can adjust how the audio sounds while the speed is being changed. Next keyboard shortcut is amazing and you will be using it every single time and that is to go to full screen. Hold down control and click F. Boom, full screen. You can play through, you can, you can even do the fast forward or the rewind shortcuts that I showed you earlier all in beautiful full screen and you can hover over you can mute your footage scrub it through you can also undo your full screen by clicking that button or just hit Control f again and that will get you out of full screen if you're someone that's loading up effects or even just a bunch of color grading there is a great shortcut for you if you're experiencing any lag or maybe you just want to see what the video looks like without the effects on and that shortcut is shift d and you can even turn it on and off while you're doing the playback. And you can also do it in full screen. And one final shortcut for all of you guys, and this is the shortcut to rule them all. That is Control Alt K. And that brings up your shortcut panel. All the keyboard shortcuts I just showed you, you can find within here. As well, if you're coming from something else like Premiere Pro, they already have all those shortcuts where they can be downloaded onto DaVinci and you can do that by coming up to where it says DaVinci Resolve, clicking the drop down arrow and there you have Adobe Premiere Pro, you also have Final Cut, Avid and Pro Tools. But if you're also someone that likes to make your own keyboard shortcuts or your own keyboard binds, you can do that by searching all right here and you can click it and give yourself one. This one I already have K 
connected to something else, so I'm gonna hit cancel. But you can also go on and click on the keyboard up here and see where it is connected to. That way you can make the keyboard shortcuts your own and what feels best to you. If there were some keyboard shortcuts that I left out that you find very useful for your workflow in editing within DaVinci Resolve, let us know in the comments section. Till next time, I'm Hayden and I will catch you guys in the next video.